Hey there, it's Drew. This is a half inch tubing bender from Rigid. These things confuse a lot of people, so I just wanted to take a few minutes and explain how to use them and show you what all these markings mean. So within the next few minutes, I'm gonna sketch out a piece of tube, and then I'll bend up that piece of tube just like I would on the job site. So let's get right into it. This is a cheap tubing bender from Harbor Freight. These are some tubing cutters and a less cheap 3 8 tubing bender from Rigid followed by the half inch tubing bender also from Rigid. This one's pretty nice. As you can see, it has wheels or rollers. These rollers will make your life a whole lot easier, especially for larger diameters and stainless steel. The tubing benders are made for tubing with an exact OD or outside diameter. So not schedule pipe sizes and not copper pipe sizes. For this example, we're going to sketch up a line that has a 3 inch segment, a 90, followed by a 7 inch segment, a double 45 offset that is 3 inches from center to center, followed by a 4 inch leg. Now let me stop and explain this offset. The 3 inches I designated is from center line to center line. That's not the overall travel of the segment between the two 45s. That's going to be longer. This is like basics to pipe fitting, but I'll go over it briefly since if you're bending tubing, you're probably bending some weird angles. We're going to take that 3 inches from center line to center line and multiply it by 1.414. That's the magic number for a 45 degree offset. Our center to center measurement times 1.414 will give us the overall travel dimension. So there will be four and a quarter inches between those two 45 degree bends. Now, if we were doing a 30 degree offset, that magic number or multiplier would be two. So three inches center to center times two is six. There'll be six inches between our two 30 degree bends. Here's a couple other numbers you might use when bending tubing. If you'd be interested in more basic pipe fitting information, let me know in the comments. I'm tempted to make a dedicated video on pipe fitting, but I don't want to do it unless there is some interest. So this is a scrap piece of tubing that I'm going to bend up for this example. Notice how it's 21 and a quarter long. All the segments in our sketch add up to 18 and a quarter. 21 and a quarter is our overall piece, so we should have three inches left over. Keep that number in mind. We're going to come back to that, see if it holds out after we bend up the piece. So I put a Sharpie mark on the tubing at three inches. And because I pulled my measurement from the left side of the tube, when I put this tubing into the bender, I want my Sharpie mark to line up with the L because my critical measurement is on the left. If I had pulled my measurement from the right, then I would want to line my mark up with the R. Always make sure these two zeros are lined up before locking it in. Now I can bend it around until that zero gets to the 90. Actually, I want to go a little bit past to allow for some spring back. You definitely don't want to go too far. You can always bend it a little farther, but there's no good way to unbend something you've already bent. So as we look right down the line, we can see that three inch mark is right on center of the tubing. I'm going to check it with the speed square now. It does look pretty square. My next segment is seven inches. Since I'm pulling my measurement from the side of the tubing, not the center, I'm going to measure seven and a quarter to allow for that quarter inch to center. Before I bend this next one, I need to make sure that my tubing bender is square with the bend that I already made. Now I put it in, line the Sharpie mark up with the 45 indicator on the tubing bender, make sure my zeros are lined up, and then pull that zero around to the 45 or a little farther. I check that one with the square, pull my next measurement four and a quarter from the center of 45 and mark it, square it up and make my next bend. Now those two bends are four and a quarter inches apart. Let's see if that center to center measurement holds out. And look at that, from side to side, which is the same as center to center, we've got exactly three inches. Perfect. Our last segment is four inches, so I measure out and cut off the excess. And what did I say a minute ago? We should have exactly three inches of excess. Uh, whoopsie, we've got three and five eighths. How did that happen? So obviously each of these bends are rounded off. They all cut off the corner. So with each bend, your piece is gonna grow a little bit. It's called gain or adjustment. There are charts out there that'll tell you how much it'll grow with each bend. I didn't use that here because you can get really close just measuring as you go, but the correct way would be to make all your marks first using the chart and then bend them. So there's the final product. It looks a lot like the sketch we drew. One other thing I need to mention is if you're bending past 90 degrees, some of the nicer tubing benders allow for you to unlock and pivot the handle, lock it back in, and bend the rest of the way around to 180 degrees. So I hope that made sense. Look, if you hated this video, be sure to not subscribe. That's the best way to let me know you're not interested in any more future content. If you have any questions or if I left anything out, let me know in the comments or DM me on Instagram. If you're interested in any of the tools that you saw me use in the video, like the tubing bender, 
the tubing cutters or those acrylic levels. They're all in my Amazon storefront. Check them out if you're interested. Uh, Till next time, I'm Drew. And I'm building.